The Christmas Box is a holiday-themed novel with loose autobiographical elements, penned by American author Richard Paul Evans. The narrative revolves around Richard, a devoted workaholic who embarks on a transformative journey, discovering the true essence of Christmas and the profound importance of family. Guiding him on this path are the wisdom of an elderly widow and ethereal visitations from an angelic presence within his dreams. When Evans first self-published this heartwarming tale in 1993, he was a 31-year-old advertising executive with no formal writing background. His motivation for crafting the story was rooted in a deep love for his daughters. Remarkably, The Christmas Box achieved a remarkable milestone, becoming the first book ever to simultaneously debut at number one on the New York Times bestseller list in both hardcover and paperback editions during its release week. Over the subsequent quarter century, Evans has authored 31 other best-selling books in addition to this beloved classic. The book is structured into six chapters followed by an epilogue. The opening chapter, The Widow's Mansion, introduces a young couple, Richard and Carrie, along with their baby daughter, Jenna. They take up residence in the home of an elderly widow, Marianne Parkin, where they assume the roles of caretakers, cooks, and housekeepers in exchange for lodging and meals. This arrangement suits them well as Richard's tuxedo rental business continues to flourish. In the subsequent chapter, simply titled The Christmas Box, mirroring the book's title, a significant discovery unfolds. While exploring the attic of the Grand Mansion, Richard and Carrie's brother, Barry, stumble upon an exquisitely crafted Christmas box. It is described as follows, burled walnut, intricately carved, and polished to a high sheen. The box measures approximately 10 inches in width, 14 inches in length, and half a foot in depth, offering ample space for a sheet of stationery to lay flat inside. In the third chapter, titled The Bible Box, Richard seizes a rare opportunity to break away from his relentless work routine and share a meal with his wife, their child, and Mary, albeit only on Sundays following church services. Originally, their agreement dictated that meals would be consumed separately from Mary. However, as the bonds between Carrie and Mary strengthen, and Richard feels compelled to work late every night to sustain his business and support his family, this arrangement undergoes a shift. During the family dinner, Richard broaches the topic of the various collectibles stored in the attic. Mary mentions her late husband's cherished collection of rare Bibles, most of which she sold after his passing. She retained a few of his favorites, including one with a peculiar error where the seventh commandment reads, thou shalt commit adultery instead of the correct thou shalt not commit adultery. Mary finds this mistake more amusing than advocating for adultery. Chapter 4, titled The Dream, The Angel, and The Letter, delves into Richard's deteriorating sleep patterns. Even before relocating to Mary's mansion, the stress of his relentless work routine has been taking a toll on his rest. However, since moving, the recurring dream that haunts Richard has become increasingly vivid and lucid. In this dream, Richard finds himself standing alone in an expansive field, with the horizon stretching endlessly in every direction. Suddenly, he is no longer alone, an angel accompanies him. Yet, each time he attempts to gaze upon her countenance, the angel transforms into solid stone. In the middle of the night, still unsettled by yet another recurrence of the enigmatic angel dream, Richard is roused by music emanating from the attic, specifically from the Christmas box. Driven by curiosity and an intensifying need to decipher the recurring dream's significance, Richard decides to open the box. Inside, he discovers a collection of love letters authored by Mary. However, he remains unaware of the identity of the letter's intended recipient. Meanwhile, Mary becomes increasingly fixated on Richard's demanding work schedule. Mary's emotional turmoil becomes evident as she's been shedding tears frequently, a fact Carrie confirms when she opens a particularly exquisite Bible from Mary's late husband's collection, only to find its pages drenched in sorrow. Before long, the harsh reality comes to light, Mary is afflicted by an inoperable tumor that exerts pressure on her brain, and her time on this earth is likely limited. In Chapter 5, titled The Stone Angel, Richard takes the love letters to Mary's neighbor, Steve. Steve cryptically reveals that while these are indeed love letters, their intended recipient isn't a traditional lover, per se. Chapter 6, The Angel, unveils a poignant revelation, the recipient of the letters is Mary's late daughter, Andrea, who tragically passed away during childhood. It is also Andrea who assumes the role of the angel in Richard's recurring dreams. 
Mary's persistent preoccupations and her encouragement for Richard to explore the Christmas box are all part of a strategic plan to persuade him to redirect his focus from work to his daughter, Jenna. Mary herself carries profound regrets about not dedicating more time to Andrea and taking her presence for granted. In the epilogue, Mary's life draws to a close on Christmas morning. While the plot may seem somewhat contrived, the Christmas box imparts a crucial message about family that resonates with parents throughout the year, whether during the holidays or in everyday life. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.